Hello everyone and welcome to Retro Brick Reviews, where today we will be taking a look at the LEGO Star Wars 20th Anniversary lineup of five sets that will be releasing in April of 2019. Of course, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the original wave of LEGO Star Wars sets, all the way back in 1999 to commemorate the release of Star Wars The Phantom Menace. So yeah, there's five sets to get through. And let's start off with the smallest of the five, that being set number 75262, The Imperial Dropship, which is a remake of set number 7667, Imperial Dropship, from 2008. Some of you might also think of that set as the Imperial Stormtrooper Battle Pack. I mean, if you know your LEGO Star Wars, you can look at this set and tell what it's a remake of. Anyway, this set features five minifigures, those being a Shadow Stormtrooper, three standard stormtroopers, and a 20th anniversary specialty figure of Han Solo based off of his appearance in the original Millennium Falcon set from all the way back in the year 2000. Starting off with the main build, this is a 125-piece set I forgot to mention, and it retails for about 20 bucks in the United States, as opposed to the original set, which was 81 pieces for $10.00. And, yeah, and I feel as though this dropship looks just alright. I do personally prefer the original design of this, but I feel as though there are definitely some improvements here. Like, I like how now there is more black on this thing, and I like the switch up from, from light gray to dark gray in theory. Same thing with the normal blue to dark blue in theory. And the reason I'm saying in theory is because... While I kind of get the change, I feel as though the color scheme now just seems kind of muddled, because, like, light gray, blue, and black, it was a very striking theme. And also remember, back in 2008, that was kind of the LEGO Empire scheme. Like, your LEGO TIE Fighters back then were black with blue highlights, and then obviously the gray would be, like, your Star Destroyers. Here... There really isn't any sort of theme like that, like now there isn't any blue in Star Wars, and dark gray isn't really used that much either, so I feel as though maybe it would have made a bit more sense if they didn't want to keep with the color scheme, if maybe they'd, maybe they'd like replaced the blue highlights with light gray ones, then replaced the original light gray highlights with maybe like sand blue? I don't know, that's just a thought, but um, yeah. I f again, I like the idea of the color scheme. It it just se doesn't look as good to me. Oh, and also there are those random Nexonites fins at the back, which are just so stupid. Like, why are those there? Those, those are not Star Wars. And then there's that cockpit, which is also not Star Wars. And, like, I don't think LEGO has the one they used originally still in production, but, like, they could have done better than this. They could have used, like, the cockpit from... The one from the $30 Black Panther set. No, no, not the, not from the Black Panther movie, but um, the, 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 the $30 Captain America Civil War set that came with Black Panther, that cockpit. Like, the Jet Pursuit, or whatever it was called. That I think that would have been a good choice. But yeah, um, you do have a seat up front for one minifigure, and yeah, I think that canopy is... I mean, the seating area is alright. The canopy is not that good. And for some reason on the sides, we only have, have a spot on each side for one figure each. So I guess you just have to have one stormtrooper either sitting on top or just on the battlefield. But hey, at least you do have holders for stud guns. In fact, quite a few. You can see there's, at the bottom, you have two anti, well, not anti-studs, but two studs with holes in them. And that'll also be on the other side. That's four spots. And then up top, you also have a little sort of anti-slope piece with a with an anti-stud why do i keep saying anti-stud with a hole in it so you could fit two more stud guns up there which i think is cool for storage and also so you could attach them to fire them at your rebels i guess rebels not included but yeah and that's really all there is for this model starting off with the four main minifigures for the set on the left, we have the Shadow Stormtrooper, and on the right, we have the three Standard Stormtroopers. Let me noted that all four do come with blasters, it's just that the Shadow Stormtroopers is the blaster that you saw previously on the dropship itself. 
Starting with the standard troopers, these are the new 2019 figures that came in the Juniors, or, well, 4 Plus Death Star Trench Run, and also the Death Star Escape set from the standard line of sets. And it's pretty cool to just right now, right after we get this new design, to get three of them in one set. And yeah, I know a lot of people personally don't like the new helmet design. I'm really kind of indifferent, like, they don't look that different to me, although that might just be because I don't have my hands on these new designs yet, so, that, so my opinion might change, but for the moment, I think these are fine. Cool that they're double-molded and how you finally have the black squares on the back, that's great. And now, now you and now no longer angry clone, cl angry clone shows his ugly neck. But yeah, other than that, torso and legs are the same we've been getting since 2014. Stud guns are fine. I know a lot of people would prefer blasters, and I mean, I feel as though Lego should include both just to give you the option. But like, I don't mind stud guns that much. Although that might just be because I'm the I'm not an army building type. I can imagine how someone who wants to build an army of hundreds or maybe even thousands of Imperial minifigures might be a little miffed that after buying all these sets, they also have to go on BrickLink and buy hundreds of blasters just to make it look palatable. Yeah. Um, the Shadow Stormtrooper, though, is an entirely new minifigure that I believe is going to be probably forever exclusive to this set, as, of course, Shadow Troopers are non-canon and... In fact, in 2015, LEGO even came up with a new design for the non-canon Shadow Troopers. But this is, of course, a remake of the old, and in my opinion, much better design, which is just a completely black Stormtrooper, with here, dark, all dark gray printing. As well as a bit of silver on the helmet. I believe that the original Shadow Trooper from 2008 might have actually had... Well, originally, originally from 2007, might have actually had a... I think it had some sand blue markings on the helmet, where this one has silver. But I honestly prefer silver here, so I don't mind. So yeah, four fantastic figures, but of course they're not the only ones, as this set also includes Han Solo, complete with the classic um, Loud Hailer Blaster with just a stud on the end, although I myself will probably be switching that out for the classic revolver piece to depict Han's blaster as it appeared in LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. One of my favorite LEGO games. Pretty awesome. Also, my also the first time I knew that LEGO Star Wars was a thing was through was when I got that game for Christmas. So that was pretty awesome. Um, anyway, but yeah, he has the classic Lego male hairpiece. Good to see that that's still in production after 40 years at this point. Yeah, forget the 20th anniversary of Lego Star Wars. This is the 40th anniversary of male hair. But yeah, he just has a reproduction of the face print and the legs are also just a direct reproduction. The torso, though, is new because on the back print... Well, the original didn't have any back printing, of course, it being 2000, but on the back of this one, we have a print that has the 20th anniversary LEGO Star Wars logo, which I know some people mind. I don't really, since, like, you're not going to be displaying this, like, in a scene. You're going to keep it on the stand, and you're never really going to see that print, since the, obviously, you'll, you always want to have the figure facing towards you. But yeah, Oh, and then the stand is nice. You, that is a printed piece by the looks of it with the 20 years, and it does have Han Solo, so each 20th anniversary figure does get a specialized stand, which is quite nice. And all five sets do come with an anniversary figure. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the set itself. But now might be a good time to do a direct comparison between this set and the 2008 version, and I already brought up some complaints, like how I definitely prefer the cockpit on the old one. Even if towards the back end of the cockpit it did look kind of awkward, I preferred the overall shaping. And this one also doesn't really connect all too well with the main ship, um, with the main body. Um, yeah, I definitely prefer how the flaps were done on the old one, where they really weren't even flaps, they were more just stabilizers, I guess you could call them. But yeah, and then, um, also, yeah, I just feel as though the blue and light gray is a much better scheme than what we have now, although there is, to be fair, some dark gray on the old one as well, but it, I don't know, it fits better because it's used less, in my opinion. I don't know, I definitely do feel as though the standard blue is very striking, and I wish they kept it. 
And you can also see on the old one that you could fit two Stormies on each side, so you could fit every figure in the set and even have an extra space left over for a Stormy you might have from another set, which I thought was pretty cool. The new set did drop that, which is sad. However, on the other hand, the new set does have more spots to put blasters, so you can on the original you could only fit two blasters up there. Now you can fit six, so it's sort of a trade-off, though I do prefer the old one. Also, the old one was much more sleek, I guess? Or, well, maybe it just looked that way because... I don't know why. The new one just looks much taller and more awkward up at the top. Also, they tiled it off on the old one, which was pretty nice. See, I gotta say, I do prefer the old version of this set, and it certainly doesn't help that they doubled the price this time around. And, I mean, the new one... If anything, it's a bit smaller than the old one. At best, they're the same size, so I really don't see the price increase. Like, I get that in general, like, $15 is the current Battle Pack price, and I would have been fine paying $15 for, we, for what we get here, but it's $20, and I know that that's because they also included a fifth minifigure in that Han Solo, but, like, if you're making this a $20 set, you could have easily popped in an extra at least an extra, like, 30 pieces to make this a bit bigger. You know, give us seating for more figures. Make it larger. Make it more detailed. Maybe make it look a bit more sleek. I don't know. It just feels as though this set is not worth 20 bucks. I'm, I'm totally still getting it, though. In fact, I'm getting at least most of these 20th anniversary sets, and this is no exception, as the 20th anniversary Han minifig is fantastic. The four regular Imperial figures are great. I'm just not too sure about that build. Although I'm sure with a bit of tweaking, it could be made to look pretty good. So yeah, that's my opinion. Definitely not a, not a fantastic set, but it's still pretty good. Great tribute to a classic LEGO Star Wars set that's beloved by many, and I could see a lot of people considering this to be their favorite set of the new line, though it isn't mine personally. <laughs> Moving on to another set, here we have the set number 75261, Clone Scout Walker, which is a remake of 7250, Clone Scout Walker, from 2005, the original wave of Revenge of the Sith sets. And this set comes with 250 pieces for $30, as opposed to the original set coming with 108 pieces for $10. So this set has more than double the piece count, but also triple the price. Is it worth it? Let's find out. So starting off, this set includes four minifigures, those being 20th Anniversary Classic Darth Vader, hailing from the 1999 TIE Fighter and Y-Wing set, as well as a modern Kashyyyk Scout Trooper, a Wookiee Warrior, and a standard B-1 Battle Droid, and builds including the Kashyyyk ATRT, a Dwarf Spider Droid, and a little bit of a Wookiee gun emplacement. Starting off with the main walker, yeah, you have those two antenna up front, so let's just zoom in, and now we can get a better look at the thing. And I think this is definitely the best ATRT LEGO has ever made, even trumping the 2013 ATRT, which was a fantastic set when it came out for 20 bucks. This set's 30, but you do get more here than with that set, so I think it so I feel as though the, the inc definitely this set is worth more than twenty, at least. Um. Anyway, but yeah, this set is fantastic looking, and I this is just a really great walker. And I know it is much larger than it should be. It, this is not close to minifig scale, but I don't care because it looks fantastic. And I mean, minifig scale is really kind of a subjective thing anyway, I and mean, with the wonky proportions of minifigs, it can be pretty... There's really no way to get something to be perfectly minifigure scale and still have it accommodate minifigures inside of it, at least for a craft like this, so this works pretty well. You have a few stickers up, up towards the front, which look good. I like the shaping with the, the flag pieces around the sides of the cockpit. Looks like you just have a little control stick in there. Underneath the main front-facing gun, you get just a stud shooter, which can shoot forward. And for the legs, you do get articulation at the hips, the knees, and the, um, the, the ankles. And while you can't really make it step any more forward than it is right here, 
you can definitely make it step back to create a sort of walking pose. And it, and this has roughly the same articulation, in fact, the exact same articulation as the 2013 ATRT, and also as the Lego Movie Micro Managers, at least the larger ones, like the one in the Metal Beard set. So, yeah. So you can actually get this into a number of walking poses, which is pretty great, and I really hope that LEGO, with the next ATST they do for the Empire, they take this into it, they do this design, because even though I understand that this is less accurate and it's more accurate to do the more technique design they do with the ATST walkers, I much prefer to have a poseable thing that doesn't look 100% accurate. Oh, and also having this be like, small and not a $40 thing for a, for a small walker is, you know, that's also helpful. But yeah, this is just a very well done model, very detailed. I love the color screen with the s scheme with the mostly gray, but also a bit of sand green and dark tan to get in some camouflage in there. Y'all know how much I love sand green. Yeah, this is really a perfect ATRT design. I cannot see anything that LEGO could have really improved at all. I mean, I don't know, maybe they could have had it where you could also rotate the cockpit up top, like, that, rotate that separately from the main leg chassis. I mean, maybe you actually can, and it just isn't shown in this picture, because that would be amazing, that would make this perfect. In fact, maybe you can't do that, but it looks with some technic pieces, like, you might even be able, actually be able to, like, angle this up, which would be incredible. So yeah, yeah I can't really think of any flaws with this, this is perfect. Our other two builds, I mean, they're pretty good. The gunnery section is very simple, with just a little forward-facing blaster. And, I mean, it it's acceptable. I, it's fine. Kind of wish that maybe there was a more... The hinges were more preset. Like, there was maybe a plate that went under this that connected at least the, the one in the middle and the ones in the very ends. Because, as it is, you could really kind of easily mess up the shaping of that. But that's just a minor complaint, and the dwarf spider droid is something that I really don't care for, because LEGO does these all the time, and they're never good, and I never like them. This one has a stud gun on the front, I don't care. But, like, I think it would have been cool if maybe instead of including these builds, LEGO had included something else using these parts, like just spitballing here. Maybe they could have done two throwback sets in one, and maybe for the droids, they could have included the sort of b droid tank build from the original droids battle pack in 2007 and just included like a couple of B1 battle droids in the set instead of just the one. That would have been pretty cool, I think. Just as a thought, or maybe they could have given us a bark speeder and a second clone. I don't know, but this is fine. I do think these builds are all right, although they could be better. Anyway... Minifig time, this set includes three, as previously mentioned. The Wookiee is the highlight here, as he's a, a, a pretty generic Wookiee, but that's great, since we don't really get generic Wookiees often, so this is a great figure. I believe it is new. It doesn't look like any of the Rebels Wookiees, so yeah, I'm going with that. This is a new Wookiee, which looks pretty great. The other two figures are not, though. The Battle Droid is just a classic one, and I'm glad that LEGO ditched that inaccurate Kashyyyk Battle Droid design from the beginning of this year, since that was just not good. And then also we have our Clone Trooper, which I kind of would prefer if they'd done sort of as a throwback what they did with the original Scout Walker, where it was just a standard clone just with a bit of green on his armor. I think that would have been kind of cool to get a, as a throwback, but this guy's fine. I remember back in 2014, these Kashyyyk Troopers were, like, the coolest figures ever because they were so detailed, but now we have so many of them that they're not special anymore. Alright, though. In our 20th anniversary figure, this time is Darth Vader. Looking at the stand, you can see that there is a little, sort of, couple of studs extending off to the right, and the idea is that you would use those with all of the stands to connect them all together, and the reason Hans didn't have them is because that would be the one on the end, but yeah, so anyway, so we have Vader, simple torso print, the classic helmet is great, he'll have the classically styled gray face, which is great. Yeah, pretty cool stuff. The 20th anniversary print is covered up by the cape, so you really could have this guy and just pretend that he's the classic Vader and no one would really know, which is nice. If I had one complaint, it's that the lightsaber hilt is just the standard metallic silver. 
I know that LEGO doesn't really do chrome pieces anymore, but it would have been cool if maybe they just brought it back for this one thing where they could have given us a chrome lightsaber hilt for to sort of do it like they did them back in the original LEGO Star Wars sets. I don't know, just a thought. Comparing this set to the original Scout Walker... Hey, wait, that's not quite right. Ah, there we go. So yeah, in comparing this set to the original clone Scout Walker, you can see that the new one is definitely a bit bigger, but, and, yeah. Other than that, though, they are pretty similar. They have about the same level of articulation. They have, they both have front-facing guns. They have kind of similar designs for the front construction, although this one definitely has more panels to it. Yeah. I think the main thing here is detail, and the new set has that so much better than the old. Like, the old was still a pretty good set, but the new one absolutely blows it out of the water. And, again, the old one was $10, and for $10, that's a really great walker, and I really do wish that LEGO still did cheap Star Wars sets that weren't just micro-fighters. Like, imagine actually getting a Star Wars walker for $10 in this day and age. That would be crazy. But yeah, anyway, but like the new one is 30 bucks, and I feel as though it might be a bit overpriced, but it's still pretty good. One of my favorites of this lineup. Yeah, it's worth it. So yeah, pretty good set. It's an improvement, definitely. Best ATRT Lego's ever done, in my opinion. Great figures, great build. Yeah. However, it's not my favorite. My absolute favorite of these five sets is Anakin's Pod Racer, a set that most people actually seem to have as their least favorite. Anyway, this set is set number 75258. It's a remake of set number 7131 from the original LEGO Phantom Menace lineup. And this set comes with 279 pieces for $30, as opposed to that original coming with 136 pieces for $15. And this it includes three minifigures, those being Anakin Skywalker, Padme Amidala, and Luke Skywalker as our 20th anniversary figure. Notice how here LEGO did an original trilogy figure for a prequel set. There are no prequel-based anniversary figures in these sets, which is too bad. I mean, again, the only reason we got LEGO Star Wars in the first place, really, was because of the Phantom Menace, so... It would have been nice to have at least gotten, like, one Phantom Menace prequel figure. Like, just Qui-Gon, maybe? I don't know. Bit disappointing, but I can live with it. Anyway, the build here for the Pod Racer is very good. Definitely, by far, the best LEGO Pod Racer. Well, not by far, as this does share a lot of similarities with the 2011 Pod Racer from that Anakin and Sebulba's Pod Racer set, but this is an improvement in a few ways. The front pods are very well detailed. A sticker at the end of each, uh, I, I don't know what you call them, the three front mandibles, you get, a, you get a checkered sticker on each. The two pods are connected this time with pink force lightning, which is a really good part usage that looks fantastic. Lots of great brick built detail for the engines with some gears and some cylinders and cones, gold and silver parts, it's very well done. At the back, you just have the cockpit connected by a couple of flex tubes, and yeah, some stickers back there, Control brick built yokes for Anakin. Um, the two sections are, of course, connected by clear Technic pieces, and there is a little clear Technic stand at the bottom. Which is really the only way for LEGO to do pod racers, so I don't really mind. <laughs> yeah, pretty great set. Not much else to say. I love pod... I I love the design of the pod racers, and very unpopular opinion, I actually really do like the pod race sequence in The Phantom Menace. And also, also another thing is that the 2011 pod racer set is one that I always wanted to get, but I was never able to get my hands on. So this is a great way to finally get a Lego pod racer, which is just fantastic. Anyway, minifigs. On the left we have Anakin, who's the same one from the Micro Fighter. Helmet is a bit lame, kind of wish they'd gone with a printed one, and on the X-Wing helmet piece from the, like, how they did it in the 2011 set. Face prints and torso are good, though, so that's good. Padme is more interesting with a brand new hair piece that looks pretty good. Not a huge fan of how it frames the face. Maybe they could have done that a bit better. Maybe had it come down a bit further on the head, but I think the shaping is good. 
The torso print is great. She, This is the first minifigure to use the mid-legs from the Harry Potter series outside of, well, the Lego Harry Potter collectible minifig series. So that's pretty cool to get those in black. And I'm sure it'll be great for people who aren't fans of Harry Potter who wanted to get these pieces. Oh, but then there is one issue with this figure, and that's the face. You see, Lego reusing faces from one character to represent another character is nothing new. However, that's normally something they do in, like, superhero sets, like how Captain Marvel is just Amelia Clark from Solo A Star Wars Story, and how Nick Fury is just Cyborg from Justice League. And those are just a couple of examples that I think of off, that I'm thinking of off the top of my head. Um Oh, um the new Poison Ivy is just Mantis from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. That's another one. Yeah, those are just a few examples, but that that's not normally a Star Wars thing. Yet sh yet sure enough, here we have a Jin Erso's head being used for Natalie Portman. The two look nothing alike. Lego's literally made more Natalie Portman-like heads in recent time. Heck, the the 2011, well, actually, the 2010, 11, whenever it was, the, the, the Sith Infiltrator that came with Padme, and it was the first set to have Darth Maul's sort of spiky crown spike piece. Yeah, that, that, that one, the... Tw yeah, I want to go with 2011. Anyway, that set came with her with the Hermione head, which I think was a good choice. The 2010 Hermione head, and Lego still has that in production, judging by Lego Dimensions, so they probably could have just popped that on this figure, and it would have looked a lot better. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, our anniversary fig this time is Anakin Sky... Luke Skywalker, actually, and he is based... And he is in his Rebel Pilot design that first appeared in the classic 1999 Snowspeeder set, as well as the 1999 X-Wing set. And yeah, he has the simple pilot's vest, classic face that actually this isn't the first time that's being reprinted, as we also got a 1999 Tatooine Luke in the 2014 revision of the LEGO Star Wars Visual Dictionary, which was cool, cool figure. The helmet design is very simple, but it is, of course, based off of the original, which is Great, love the simple design. Lightsaber has the same problem as Vader's with the hilt, but it's alright. Yeah, cool beans. Comparing the two pod racers, this one to the original. I mean, this is a bit unfair. I mean, like, really? It's I mean, like, with the with the previous two, like it was a 2008 set and a 2005 set, so while Lego hasn't pr progressed a lot since then. By those points, they still had begun to get their hand on LEGO Star Wars, made new pieces for the line, come up with new techniques. This was literally one of the first LEGO Star Wars sets ever. It's kind of a miracle it even exists, in all honesty, so I really don't know if it's entirely fair to judge these two sets and compare them, but uh, I feel that the new one is definitely the better one, though, although the old one did have some cool stuff. Like, I always thought it was a good idea how they used tan pieces to connect the pods together, and while I do prefer clear, I have to admit the tan was a good choice to represent the sand, and if it was possible, I would kind of prefer if LEGO did use bricks and plates to connect them as opposed to Technic. I don't know, I just prefer that look. Like, if they can make the all those bricks and plates in clear, which they obviously can't, but if they could, I think that would be a pretty great look. Yeah, and one thing that the new one does skip out on that the old one had was that the old one did come with a pit droid as well as a little flag stand, and I think those would have been cool little side builds to include. The flag stand is kind of superfluous, but I would have liked to see the pit droid. And yeah, I know that I could easily make one myself using parts I already have, except not really because I, I don't think LEGO's even made those sort of robot arms it has, the arm pieces in brown in, like, years? I don't even know if they've ever been made in the modern reddish-brown now that I think of it, so those, that could be a bit of an issue, so I would have liked to see that, but yeah, that's really my only complaint. The new one is a market improvement. So yeah, that's the Pod Racer, a fantastic set, definitely my favorite, and I don't really get the f why people don't really like it. Anyway, 
Next set is set number 75259, Snowspeeder, which is a sort of a double remake of both set number 7130 from 1999 and set number 4500 from 2004. This set comes with 309 pieces for $40, and both of those previous sets, they both came with 215 pieces for $20. Starting off with the main Snowspeeder build, this is of course based off of Luke Skywalker and Dak Ralter's Snowspeeder from The Empire Strikes Back, which explains the lack of gray, well, the, the many gray highlights and the lack of any orange highlights because theirs didn't really have any orange highlights, and... Well, that was the intent. All the gray here really does remind me of the old Snowspeeder from 99, which was a gray model. So I don't know if that was intentional, but I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, this model is just a standard Lego Snowspeeder. You have guns at the front. You have the, you have the engines with stickers that can be exposed by lifting up the flaps. You have the cockpit, which can fit two people. And that is a new cockpit print, I believe, which is cool. You have a stud gun at the back and a tow cable winch. Yeah, not much else to say. It, it's a Lego Snowspeeder. We've Lego's made so many of these that there's really nothing I can say eh, that's new about this one. What is new is this design for a Hoth gunnery emplacement. Just a nice little defense turret. I think it's pretty good. You have a stud shooter built in next to the barrel, which is much more natural looking than any of the stud shooters we got built into the, the designs in the Assault on Hoth set and... Yep, yeah, this turret is pretty small, not really minifig scale, it should probably be bigger, but I think it's fine for what it is. You just have the little control panel at the back, represented by the sort of, I don't really know what to call it, the 1x2 brick with the sort of hinge, you know what I'm talking about, the thing at the back. And yeah, this can rotate a full 360 degrees, and you just have a, couple, a pair of electro binoculars on the ground next to it. And this is a cool inclusion as it's a nice reference to those two lego star War those two old snow speeder sets i mentioned earlier as they both also included a similar turret the figures are from left to right a standard hoth rebel trooper luke skywalker and dak ralter and this is another thing that references those two old sets as that was the same minifigure selection as those as, of course, the original sm Snow Speeder came out before LEGO had invented the Snow Trooper, the Imperial Snow Trooper mold for their helmet backpack combo. And I get, and in the 2004, so it was basically just a remake of the 1999 one. That was something LEGO did do at the time with a lot of sets, like the Snow Speeder, the X Wing, and the TIE Fighter and Y Wing sets were all basically just remade verbatim in 2004 with basically no changes. Except the Snowspeeder. The Snowspeeder was changed to hat of a different color scheme and a couple changes. The X Wing also got a few changes, but the Y Wing and TIE Fighter were kept identical from what I can tell. But yeah, so anyway, so another cool reference is the gun on the Hoth Rebel Trooper, which might look outdated since it's just a camera piece, but that is the gun piece that the guy originally had back in those two old sets, and if I'm correct, it's also the gun these guys have in LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, so that's pretty cool. Other than that, though, this guy gets a new torso, everything else is existing, but it's cool. Luke is just the same figure from the Junior set, but, that, but he's pretty nice. And Dak is, I believe, just the same figure from 2014. At least I think so, because he has the same torso and legs from the new Junior's Luke, but I don't know if those are the same exact prints that we've been getting since 2014. Anyway, so he has those prints, then he has the old Dak face that we started getting then, and I don't really mind it being used here, because even though it's it's knowing how it's used on every Rebel pilot, I can't mind it here since it, since it is a Dak face. So when LEGO uses it on Dak... It's not really a problem at all now, is it? And then the helmet is pretty cool. Just to get that simple rebel helmet with the two insignias in blue. Yeah. Our classic figure, though, is definitely the reason most people will be getting this set, is it is Lando Calrissian, hailing from set number 10123, Cloud City, one of the rarest LEGO sets ever made. I mean, not really, but like, you know, rarest wide release sets ever made? I guess that's more accurate. Anyway, this guy's pretty cool. 
The original figure is worth hundreds of dollars, so this is pretty great to get. He has the classic black hair piece, the old face print reprinted, but now it's on a standard brown instead of the, well, reddish brown instead of the classic brown. Not the first time we're getting that, as we also did get that piece in reddish brown in the 2006 Sail Barge set, but this is the first time we're getting it on this Cloud City Lando. Torso print is new, just with the updated brown up at the neckline, and also the 20th anniversary design on the back. And the cape is double-sided, and again, covers up the 20th anniversary Lego, Lego logo. So you could just pass this up as the 20th an you could, you could just pass this up as the original figure if you wanted to, which is pretty cool. Comparing this to the two old snow speeders with the new one up top, 2004 in the bottom left and 1999 in the bottom right, you can see that, yeah, the two old ones are very similar, though there are some differences. And you can see definitely how in some ways the new one is inspired by the old ones again, with how they both included a gun and a Hoth Rebel Trooper with that awesome camera gun piece. Yeah, comparing these three, it is pretty clear that the new one is the best looking one. However, in terms of value, I mean, the new one is also basically the same size as both of those older ones but it is double the price. And yeah, well, I can admit that the new one does look the best of the three. It, there's also just the fact that this new set is absolutely not worth $40. And in general, that's a big thing with LEGO Star Wars now is that everything is super overpriced. And while most of the time it's that they can include detail, such as with like $30 for an ATRT is a bit much, but it's very detailed and you get some other cool stuff, so I'd say it's worth it. $30 for a pod racer is a bit much, but it is superbly detailed, so it's worth it. The snow speeder is kind of the same level of detail we've been getting since like 2007, so there's this isn't what so this is not a $40 set. Like $40 back Less than a decade ago was the Hoth Wampa Cave, which was a snow speeder, a big cave playset, a Wampa Big Fig, and like three minifigs. This set is like four minifigs, a little gun, and a snow speeder, and it's the same price. This set should be third, like a snow speeder should be thirty dollars, and even that's pushing it a little. It should be like twenty-five, but thirty I'm fine with. It comes with the gun, it's thirty. I think that's fair. Since we're adding in the 20th anniversary figure, maybe make it 35. I would pay 35 for this. 40 is ridiculous. Like, I want to get that, this set because that Lando fig is great, but I'm not paying $40. I'll wait till this goes on sale, and then I'll get it. Yeah, I think that's what you should do, too. This is a good set, but just not at the price it's at. However, I guess it's cool for me since this is actually my first LEGO snow speeder as I never bothered to pick any of the ones up before. So yeah, that's cool at least. But anyway, if you thought this set was overpriced, you haven't seen anything yet because we also have the last set of the wave. Set number 75243, Slave 1. Which is a remake of basically every LEGO minifig slave one, and, le and this isn't really clear which one it's a remake of, so I just put that it's a remake of all of them. So number 7144 from 1999, so number 6209 from 2006... It's at number 8097 from 2010, and 7144 is actually from 2000, not from 99, so forget that. And this set comes with 1,007 pieces for $120, as opposed to the, as the, the 2000 one having 166 pieces for $20, 2006 having 537 pieces for $50, and 2010 having 573 pieces for $80. And this set includes five-ish, six-ish minifigures, as you get Han Solo, Boba Fett, Forlom, Zuckus, Han and Carbonite, and a 20th anniversary Princess Leia based off of A New Hope. Starting off with the main build, this is uh, not a $120 set, just want to get that out there. This set is very detailed, nearly basically on the same level of detail as the UCS Slave 1, or, well, as close as LEGO could get at a minifig scale. 
That is really why the set is so much money, although personally I kind of would have preferred if they'd, you know, given us less detail and in return a, a more palatable price tag. And yeah, the play features are kind of what we'd expect. The cockpit can open and you'll have the air and you'll have the feature where it rotates as you turn the ship. Um, the wings are attached, obviously. You can turn the guns at the back. There will be a ramp that opens up and a cargo bay to put in Han Solo and Carbonite. And also at the front, you can see that in the nose there are a couple of spring shooters, which I think are cool. And that's a callback to the 2006 Slave One, which is the version I consider this to be a remake of. But since everyone else is saying it's either 2000 or 2010 that this is a remake of, I decided not to choose. So, and I just said that it's a remake of all of them. But I, that is definitely a callback to the 2006 one, which had one of the huge Technic rubber missiles built into the nose. Yeah, that really is all there is to say on this model. A lot of detail, not that many stickers. Most of it is brick built, which is good. Yeah, good said. Just overpriced. Minifigs, here we have the first five. From left to right, we have Zuckus, Forlom, Boba Fett, Han and Carbonite, and Han Solo. Going from right to left in terms of describing them, Han is lame because they should have just taken the one from the Betrayal at Cloud City set, but I guess, I mean, they couldn't afford double-molded legs, I guess, in this set because, I mean, this is only $120. We can't afford double-molded legs in that set, we can only afford double molded legs for four dollar the Lego Movie 2 Lucy vs. Duplo Invader poly bag. Literally, there's a four dollar the Lego Movie set with double molded legs. Double molded legs are in so many sets, but like, we finally got them once in Star Wars with that Cloud City, and now they're just never going to use them again, probably. Which is a real shame, because like, they, it's not even like they would have to create a new part. They could have just t taken those legs directly out of production and put them here. Wouldn't have been hard at all. Also, just a slight complaint, but I feel so they probably shouldn't have given this Han the sort of 2014 Micro Fighter Han face. They should have gone with the, the Han face where he's a bit scared on one side and on the other side he has the closed eyes like he's frozen in carbonite. I mean, this is Han when he's going to be frozen in carbonite, so this, that, this set even includes the carbonite block, so it would have made more sense to include that. And when the carbonite block is just the same one from 2010, so LEGO still hasn't updated it to have the new hairstyle, because of course they haven't. That would require effort, which is something LEGO can't afford to put into LEGO Star Wars sets because they have to pay tons of Disney tax. Anyway, Boba Fett's just the same one we've been we got in the uh, the carbon freezing chamber in 2016. So he's just the UCS Boba Fett with no arm printing, cause you know that would be cool and you know like a good figure. And Lego can't afford arm printing in this set. It's only a hundred and twenty dollars. They can only afford arm printing in literally every other Lego theme. But, you know, and then four loms, just the same as the battle pack from 2017, I want to say, and he looks fine. Nothing really to write home about. He's the same as from a battle pack, but there's nothing wrong with him, at least. Oh, and then Zuckus is our new figure. I never much cared for Zuckus. He was always my least favorite bounty hunter from Empire. That might have been because he was never playable in Lego Star Wars. Not sure. Anyway, though, he looks fine. Cool new head mold. He, yeah, good design. Just not something that interests me a ton. Leia is another figure that doesn't interest me a ton, because unlike the other anniversary figures, where this is really my first time getting anything like them, I already have a Leia that looks nearly li exactly like this from the 2008 Death Star set. Literally, the only difference is the skin tone, and I guess also the printing on the back. But yeah, cool figure though, glad to see the old hairpiece brought out of retirement. Torso print's good. Faces, one of the better, really old Lego face prints, like it's way better than any of the, fe the, the, the yellow Harry Potter female faces, for example. But yeah, not much else to say. Comparing this to the other slave ones, we have this set in the, not in the top left, to, not, 2000 in the top right, 2006 in the bottom left, and 2010 in the bottom right. And you can really compare these sets, again, 
2,000 is really more of an honorary thing because there are, these are very different sets. I mean, this that was this that one was a sixth of the price of this new one, but that one also was a very small set, very blocky, and it only came with one real figure and then a carbonite block. I think the real comparisons are the two at the bottom, which look much more like this one. Comparing this to the 2006 one, which I feel is probably the most potent one, just because that's my favorite, and again, the play feature at the front. And also, that set also includes three bounty hunters, so I liken it the most to this one. Anyway, that set came with four figures. This set comes with five figures, since we're including that Leia. And the slave ones, as you can see, are about the same size. The new one's a bit bigger with the nose, but really they're very similar in size. And the new one does have more detail, but, like, it's not that much more detail. But the new one is well over double the price, which is just out of line. Even comparing this to 2010, which already was pretty overpriced, that set is, again, just a tiny bit smaller than this one and a bit less detailed. But again, like... Yeah, the new one is, for all shapes and pur for all purposes, it might as well be the same size. It's a tiny bit bigger, but it's it's basically the same size. So so from 2010 to 2018, you're paying an extra forty dollars to add some detail. Is that worth it to you? It's not really to me. Yeah, I mean this is easily the best Lego Slave One ever, in my opinion. It even trumps. The 2006 one, which was always my favorite, and I even kind of think it looks better than the UCS version, but it's just overpriced. Like, of the 520th anniversary sets, this is the only one that I'm not sure if I'm getting. Like, the other four, yeah, I'm definitely getting them, at least at some point. The two $30 ones are my two top priorities, then the Battle Pack, then the Snow Speeder I'll probably get when it goes on special. This set, though, I'm not sure if I'll ever pick it up. But yeah, um, so that's this set, but before we wrap up, we do have some other stuff to talk about, such as how, hey, you know, when LEGO first announced that they were doing a 20th anniversary Slave 1, me and a lot of other people were hoping it would be Django's Slave 1, Lego has something LEGO hasn't done since 2002. And that got me thinking, what are some other iconic LEGO Star Wars sets that got snubbed in favor of some cool choices, like the three smaller ones, but then also a Snowspeeder and a Slave 1. Two very underwhelming choices. So let's take a look at what I came up with. Starting off with some larger sets that I feel definitely could have made it. I think the main one that a lot of people probably wanted, including myself, because it's just one of the best LEGO Star Wars sets ever up there at the top left... The Trade Federation MTT from 2007. That was a phenomenal set that LEGO completely screwed up when they remade it in 2014, and I would just love to see one that brought it back to the original glory, since I never got that 2007 set, although I have seen it in person on a, on a few occasions. And it's an awesome set, and I would love to get an MTT of that scale with just a ton of droids. I'd imagine that nowadays a set like that would probably be like $160, even if it came with no minifigures and no prints, because that's just Disney tax for you, but um, yeah, I think that would have been a cool thing to get, a new MTT. Could have taken the place of the Slave 1 as the big set of the line. Maybe our big set could have been the Endor Shield Bunker in the bottom right, although that's less priority for me, but I mean, we haven't gotten one of those in a decade. Maybe we could have gotten my personal pick, though, like even above the MTT would have been a new version of the Republic gunship from Attack of the Clones. Sure, we got one of those in 2013, but, I mean, come on, we could have gotten a new Jedi Bob. A um, remastered Jedi Bob minifigure, imagine that. That would have been amazing. Oh, and then also in the bottom, bottom left, I posed the idea of maybe getting a new version of the Mos Espa pod race. I think my general idea being that the $30 set pod racer set could be removed so we could have a pod race set for the big spot, and then that $30 spot could go to maybe one of those four sets in the middle. Well, it would probably be more like a $40 spot, like what we got with the snow speeder, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, like, for example, the bounty hunter pursuit from Attack of the Clones, a really cool thing that I really wish we'd ever gotten another version of because that that was a pretty lame scene in all honesty pretty confusing a lot of memes 
but it, it, it would be cool to get. I like the ship designs. Well, speeder designs, I guess. They're, they're all right. The Ark 170 is a set from Revenge of the Sith that a lot of people would have loved to get, myself included. Haven't gotten one since 2010. Would have been nice. I think a really great Clone War set could have been the AAT with the... Uh, with the blue color scheme, which is really cool. That was the first set to include Clone Wars Yoda. Yeah. Oh, and then also General Grievous' Starfighter. I have the Clone Wars version picture, though I would probably go with the Episode 3 version. So you could get, like, Grievous, Obi-Wan, and, like, Commander Cody. That would be a pretty cool selection. But yeah, those are just some ideas of some sets that LEGO definitely could have done it with the direction they went with the line but then didn't, and I don't regret it too much since, aside from the Slave 1, we do have good choices, though I would have definitely liked to see one of those four sets in the corners instead of the Slave 1. Of course, these are all the sets that LEGO might have done. There are also a lot of LEGO Star Wars sets that are very classic and iconic, but that just don't fit with what LEGO does nowadays, so basically had no chance. Sets like Imperial Inspection, which would have been a great set for, like, $70, like, just include... $70 nowadays, of course. Originally it was $50, but, like, just include a smaller, less complex build of an Imperial shuttle with a little checkpoint and a bunch of figures. Or give us Watto's Junkyard. Though I think the things that interest me the most are the small sets, the stuff LEGO's not gonna do nowadays, less because there's it's outdated and more because, you know, Disney tax. Stuff like the Ultimate Lightsaber Duel, or Gungan Patrol, or Naboo Swamps, or the Lightsaber Encounter. Well, Tusken Raider Encounter, why'd I read that as lightsaber? Or Speeder Bikes is always something I thought I think would be kind of cool to get a remake of. It's like a, sort of like a Scout Trooper Battle Pack. The Jedi Duel, which was the first set with Yoda. Though I think definitely the set that deserved to be remade the most out of any of these, maybe the most out of any LEGO Star Wars set, and that it's so stupid that it got snubbed, is lightsaber duel from all the way back in 1999 the very first lego star wars set does not get a remake here and like i know it again but like lego could have easily released this set like nowadays it would probably be like 15 bucks they would expand on the builds but honestly i wouldn't really mind if they made it a good set like just too many figs good a little vaporator a good speeder just make make a nice tribute to the original, and I would not mind at all. And then, of course, there are also a lot of figures that could have been done for this for this as well. Just some ideas for some more anniversary figures we could have gotten would be uh, from 1999. Figures like Darth Maul and Young Anakin from later on in the Yellow Era. Oh, and also Qui Gon for maybe later on in the Yellow Era. There's uh, there's Darth. Darth Sidious, or the Emperor, whichever you want to call him. We have the original Yoda, that would have been a cool piece to get again. The old Boba Fett, our Lord and Savior Jedi Bob, and heck, I think it would have been even cool to give me, maybe get some Revenge of the Sith figures in Obi-Wan and Anakin. I mean, the Anakin I have pictured is the one with the headset, but I think it would have been cool to get a standard Anakin, because we never actually got a standard Episode 3 Anakin without a headset, because the only one we got was in the Ultimate Lightsaber Duel with a light-up saber, so... I always thought it would be cool to maybe get a figure like that just without the light-up saber, just as a normal minifig. That would have been a cool one. But that's just a thought. That's never gonna come to fruition. So, yeah. So, in order from least to greatest, in my opinion, my least favorite set of the five is the Slave one. Still a good set, but way too expensive. It should not be this big. I mean, again, the other Slave ones were like half the part count of this one and were about the same size. So, while I get adding detail, adding a good 500 pieces of detail is a bit ridiculous. They could have easily kept this set at like... 700, 800 pieces, and had it be much cheaper. Then there's the Snowspeeder, which is a good set, but very overpriced. And it's not just going to go in order from most expensive to least expensive here. As my third, as my middle set here is the Imperial Dropship, which is another set that's overpriced, but less so. And I mean, it's 20 bucks. You get five minifigs, five great minifigs for 20 bucks. That's a deal I can live with. Then there's the Clone Scout Walker, which is a cool set, great build, nice side builds, good minifigs, great 
Then there's the pod racer, which is just something that speaks to me personally, as I love the pod racer. Yeah. So that's my analysis on all of the new LEGO Star Wars 20th Anniversary sets, or as I like to think of them, LEGO Star Wars Legacy sets. And overall, I think it's a pretty good line. I feel as though the two $30 sets are really where it shines, and I guess also the $20 one, although the two bigger sets are definitely a letdown here, at least in my opinion. The anniversary figures are cool to get and cool to collect, and I can see, and those are definitely going to be the really big draw of these. Although I am interested in how younger kids that really care about the lore of LEGO Star Wars are going to feel about that. I mean, they probably won't mind. They'll probably just incorporate them into their standard LEGO play anyway, which I think is cool. But yeah, so thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you all in my next one. Farewell, everyone.